Well, g'day, g'day, it's Tim Pachaka here. I'm the Aussie Android Dev Guy, and in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to configure and install Android Studio on a Mac. Now, if you're running Windows or a Linux platform, click on one of the links to my left, and you'll be taken to a video where I'll show you how to do what we're doing in this video for your platform. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you need to have the Java Development Kit installed before you go ahead with the installation of Android Studio. Now, if you haven't got it installed, you're not sure if you've got it installed, you don't even know what the Java Development Kit is, click on this link over to my left and all shall be revealed in that video. So again, you need to do that first. So let's now proceed with installing and configuring Android Studio on a Mac. First things first, we want to go to developer.android.com. Developer.android.com. Once we get there, scroll down, click on get the SDK. Now click on download Android Studio for Mac. We need to accept the license agreement and we'll let it download. Okay, just finishing off the download as you can see. Okay, we're done. I'm going to open up that package now that we've just downloaded. I'm going to double click it and I'm going to just do an installation. I'm going to drag the Android Studio icon into the applications folder on the screen as you can see. See that's done. I'm going to close that now. We're finished with that. And now I'm going to start uh, Android Studio. Open. Close this so we can see it. And we're going to select, I do not have a previous version of Android Studio because of course this is an installation, a new installation. Click OK. See so it's fetching the SDK component information. That's the latest version as of the time or date and time of installing it. Okay, the wizard starts up, the setup wizard. Click on next. I'm going to choose custom next. Now, uh, a couple of things here. Well, the, so first here, I'm going to click off the performance Intel Haxam. The thing is with this Intel Haxam, it's a great tool to really speed up the speed of your emulator, which is the Android virtual device, which enables you to run Android programs or Android apps, I should say, on your computer, on your Mac. But the problem is, if you've got four gigabytes of RAM or less, or frankly, less than eight gigabytes, you will normally struggle to get it to work because it is a bit of a memory hog. So uh, there's trade-offs. The trade-off by not installing it, you'll find that your emulator takes a lot longer to start up. So it's definitely recommended if you've got the RAM, but if you've got four gigabytes or less, certainly, almost certainly it won't work, so leave it off. So I'm gonna leave it off for this video anyway, but uh, if you leave it on, no problems, make sure you've got enough memory. So I'm gonna leave the Android virtual device on. Now also here, this is important to note where the Android SDK location is going to go in case you ever need that in the future. That's the folder there where it's going to be installed. Now click on next. Now I'm gonna click on, make sure the top level is clicked as you can see there under the SDK license. We need to just click on accept and that will accept licenses for all the software. You can see the little uh, icons have all changed now. And I'm gonna click on finish. So at this point, it's now going to download the essential Android SDK information to the computer and set it up. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's just about done. Okay, you can see we're just about done now. And in fact, we are now finished. So we've finished the basic uh, download and configuration. So I click on finish. So now what I want to do is just show you around and just a few little brief things. Firstly, click on configure and go into project defaults then click on project structure. Now I just want to show you uh, the location, again the Android SDK location if you ever need it, that's how to find it, but also the JDK location. Now in terms of the JDK location, that's the one that we installed in the JDK video. You can see that's where it's looking now. It's automatically found it to find the files that it needs so it can actually create Android apps. That's the, the location directory. Now we can, if we want to, let's go back, go into SDK manager. And we can also configure some of the things that were downloaded automatically in that process you saw. So we can go through and add a few extra things. As you see at the moment, it's just downloading the bits and pieces that it needs and just sort of checking against the repository on Google server somewhere against what we've got installed on this computer. And it's going to let us know what, uh, you know, what hasn't been installed and what is available. So it's a good thing to check in here from time to time to see that you're up to date with the latest fixes and so forth because uh, one good thing about Google is they constantly update this. Okay, so that's done. I'll just put this so it's a little bit easier to see. Now if we scroll down, you can see that 
at uh, the, the ticks. You can see over here it shows you firstly whether something's been installed or not. In this case, we've got the SDK platform the, um, documentation. I would usually suggest you want to do that. So what I start off doing, I did do a deselect all, then I would normally select what I want to install. So I would maybe click on documentation. Now what's installed are the Google API. So there's Google API and there's also the SDK. The differences between the two are SDK is the sort of raw Android platform, the raw SDK, I should say, and the Google API is very similar, but it's specific to Google. So in other words, it's got additional uh, Google Maps and those types of things also included, specific Google APIs on top of that as well. So it can be a good idea to have both. And you can see that Android Studio has in fact selected both. There's also a number of these other system images. Now these are for Android virtual devices. This is if you haven't got a physical Android device and you want to go ahead and set, it, set up an emulator. So you choose, you don't normally need to choose more than one. ARM is the one that you'll need if you haven't got Haxam installed. You'll need to specify that and only use that. The Intel x86, uh, there's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. They will only work with Haxam if it's installed. Now just to note here, you might be looking at the 32 and 64. This has got nothing to do with the CPU that's on your computer. This is the emulation of a 32-bit version of Android or a 64-bit of Android, a 64 version or a 64-bit version of the Android system image. Normally the 32-bit version will be more than enough, so you'd select that again if you had Haxam installed. If you've got uh, you know, Haxam, you don't need ARM either, so it's usually one or the other. So I'll leave that. And in my case, I'm going to leave Intel X86 off because, of course, I didn't specify Haxam. The other good thing, which you can see is already installed, is the sources. It's really good because uh, Google provide all the Android uh, source code. So you can get in there and see how something's done and uh, you know sometimes it's if you're curious like I am it's good to go in there and see how the professionals have done it. So I always do that. It's also good because uh, in later videos I'm going to show you how to navigate around uh, navigate around projects and it's easy to click into packages and sort of and literally to see the Google source code. So I always install that as well. Now scrolling down there can be a few other things you may need. We've got uh, some things installed. We've got the Android support repository installed and the Google repository. Google Play services. So if you were running uh, a game that uses Google Play, you'll need to click on that to activate it. And some of these other ones, which we won't go into now. Because this is a Mac, the Google USB driver isn't needed. And this is the Haxam. So even if you forgot to do it earlier, you can still come back here and install it. So I might show that in a future video. So you would then click on install, which I'm not going to do now, and that would install, download and install those extra packages so that you could use them in your uh, projects. Lastly, I'm going to close down now. I want to show you now updates. So click on preferences. We go right down to updates down the bottom. This is another way for you to be kept up to date with new versions of Android Studio. Now you can see now if I do a check right now. So the new version's there. So I'm going to click on update and restart because it only takes a moment. Now we're just going to go back in there again. Because I also want to show you because there's different updates available depending on how cutting edge you want to be. There's a stable version, which is the stable version I've just installed now. But there's also different uh, channels that uh, Google refer to them as, where you can define whether you want to have more frequent updates, some more beta versions, you know, cutting, ed uh, cutting edge versions, those types of things. Again, to do that, we'll go back to configure again. Go back into preferences. We'll go into update, or updates, I should say. Now, so you can see I just installed that, but there's also these other channels. Now, depending on here, you know, how bleeding edge you want to be, you can specify different channels. So for example, if I choose beta, uh, well firstly we'll go back to stable again. If I click on check, there now won't be an update because we've installed it. You can see we've got the latest version. But if we go back to beta, you'll find that there is a version. And that's because a release candidate, as at the time I'm shooting this video, has been made available. So if you want to keep up to date, that's the way to do it. And you can take that further. And go right down to Canary Channel if you want, which is really literally sort of a daily release. So you will get problems more than likely from time to time, depending on you know, which version you choose. And you can see at the moment they're on the same version, but that can change. What I would recommend normally, you're normally pretty safe going to the beta channel and selecting that. It just means that you're not sort of waiting for these fixes, particularly if there's an annoying fix. It takes a long time to go move right up to stable. So I would suggest that you choose beta. So that's that. And that's a wrap. We've now gone ahead and installed and configured Android Studio and we're up and going and you're ready to start creating some Android apps. Please subscribe to my channel. Click on the subscribe button to the left over there and be kept up to date with videos as I'm coming out and releasing them on a regular basis 
for all things Android. Please also check out my Android Lollipop course. Over 11,000 or close to 11,000 students have already taken it up. 25 hours plus of video training there, teaching you how to become a great Android app developer. Now speaking of content, please also get back to me and let me know what you thought of this video, but also what you'd like me to cover in future videos because I'm here to create a great channel for Android app development, so I need to know some of the things that you're stuck with, that you'd like me to cover, that you'd like to see in future videos, and I'll do my best to address those. Lastly, check out some of the videos down the bottom left hand there, uh, up to, to my left and sort of down a little bit, and you'll see that there's videos there that you can click to get to find more Android app goodness. Okay, so this is Tim Pachaka, the Aussie Android Dev Guy, signing out, and I'll see you in, wait for it, the next video. Cheers for now.